This is version 2 of my very powerful coil gun. And as you can see, it's huge and it has quite some power and works with high voltage. So please, I can't stress this enough. Never touch the high voltage parts, stay insulated, use proper tools. And if you don't know what you are doing, don't try this project. Just watch the video for learning purposes. That being said, in this video I want to show the improvements from my previous version. I want to rectify a small error that I've told you in the previous video. I will show the schematic. I designed the new PCB. We checked the part list and assembled the board. Finally, we test it out. And I also want to design a 3D case for it, so it would look a lot better than before. So guys, stay safe and protected and let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. This time I have only one PCB, with 10 stages instead of separated segments. So I've asked PCBWay to make a huge PCB for me, and it turned out great. And I say that because for the previous version I've made it modular. Basically each stage had its own PCB, and if you want 3 stages just add 3 modules. If you want one more, just add one more stage, and so on. That was cool, but at the same time it has some minor errors. That's why I've made version 2. Because the connection between the segments was made with solder. And you need a lot of heat to add enough solder, because the huge copper tracks will dissipate a lot of that heat. And my soldering station was not powerful enough to make good solder joints. Actually, a lot of you guys commented on that, but anyway, there is too much copper on this PCB, so the heat is dissipated. But now all the stages are on the same board. In this case, we have 10 stages, and we will test it at full power. This is the schematic for this project. Basically, we have the first stage, which is a bit different, and then the second to the 10th stage, it's all the same. The first stage is a bit different because it has the push button activation, the 450 volts input, and the 12 volts input. And the rest of the stages are using infrared light to trigger the magnetic field, so they don't need the push button part. So in Altium Designer, I update the PCB and start placing the components. We have a lot of them, but because all the stages are all the same, it's a very repeating process. All you have to make sure is that the distance between the coils is 45 mm, and for the infrared LEDs as well. These LEDs that have this arrow must be face to face, because these are the detectors. So for the high voltage tracks, for ground and 450 volts, I use some very thick tracks, in order to extend enough power. And then the rest of the tracks for signal and 12 volts are using just 1 mm tracks. And that's it, the PCB is ready, but this time with 10 coils, and it has a size of 47 cm long by 5 cm. And by the way, if you want to start making professional PCBs, check the links below for the free trial of Altium Designer. It's an awesome tool, very professional, and together with Altium 365 and Octopart, you have everything that you need. Ok, so I generate the Gerbers and go to PCBWay.com. Insert the PCB size and click the Code Now button. And here I select the red color for the solder mask. I add to cart and on the next page I upload the Gerber files generated with Altium. Now submit the order and I receive the PCBs in just a few days. And they look awesome. I know that the black finish is my favorite, but I also like the red color. It looks great, right? So if you want to try my project, you can download the Gerbers for free from the tutorial page and use the services of PCBWay to get the board. Now it's time to solder. We have 10 coils, 10 thyristors, 10 huge capacitors, and these are 450 volts capacitors. We need 10 infrared LEDs and detectors, 20 huge diodes, resistors, LEDs, and so on. We also need a high voltage generator, a push button, and a battery pack for 12 volts. The full part list is also on the tutorial page, so always check the links in the description. I start with the first stage, and adding all the components will take some time, because we have a lot of them, and since the copper is so thick 
it requires a lot of heat, so my soldering station can barely do it. And this is a powerful station, but the heat dissipation is too high. Another improvement from the previous version is the barrel. Because this time instead of using a metal one, I'm using a plastic one. In this way there is a lot less friction, and the magnetic field is not wasted on the metal of the barrel, so this is a win-win. Also because this is transparent, we don't have to make holes for the infrared LEDs each 45mm, as on the PCB. So now the first stage is ready. I connect the 450V generator and the push button. Supply the gun with 12V and charge the capacitor. I test it out with the projectile and it works great. Ok, so now I can solder the rest of the stages, which are all the same. Just make sure that the LEDs and the sensors are face to face. And because this is so repetitive, I won't show you the entire process. I also had to savage some parts from my previous version, especially the copper coils, because these are a bit expensive. And if you don't want to buy them, you can also 3D print my design, and then use some enameled copper wire to create your own coils. Actually, the coils should get smaller and smaller as they go forward to the next stages. And that's because the projectile is getting faster and faster, so the capacitor should empty a lot faster as well. So using a smaller coil, we could achieve that. Ok, so the gun is ready and all the capacitors, the coils and so on are soldered in place. And it looks quite awesome, right? To test if the sensors are working, just supply 12 volts and pass with an object in front of each pair of the infrared sensors, and the red LED should light up like this. Look how they light up in series when I insert this rod. But once again, please don't try this if you don't know what you are doing. So the PCB has an input for 450 volts, 12 volts and the push button. I get the high voltage generator once again, and I connect it to the 450 volts input. I turn on the charging process by connecting the battery pack. On the side there is a voltage meter so we can see when the capacitors are fully charged. And now it is charged to over 400 volts. I add the metal projectile and fire. And wow, that was a lot of power. It went through the plywood without any problems. With so many stages, actually there is a risk that the projectile could go backwards, because it's going so fast that the magnetic field is still on when the projectile is on the other side, and it could be attracted backwards. But anyway, I bought this projectile speed meter, but it looks like it doesn't work. As you can see, after I fire, there is nothing on the screen. Also as you can see, it doesn't even detect the bullet. And my old project of the projectile speed meter is broken, so I can measure the speed right now. As a final step, to make this look cooler, I've designed a 3D printed enclosure. Actually, this will also add some safety, because the high voltage will be kept inside. I've made a case with 3 main parts, that will be joined together with screws. 3 top parts and the trigger. And inside the trigger we can add the push button. I mush together the three main parts using screws and a little bit of super glue. And all these parts were printed with PLA filament. The case has screw holes for the PCB, so I carefully add the coil gun inside of the case and I use some small screws to fix it in place. I pass all the wires to a back compartment where the generator and the battery will go. The voltage indicator is on the side so we can see the charging process. I also had two toggle switches for 12 volts and 450 volts. But unfortunately, the generator and the battery pack can both fit inside of the case. So maybe I'll place the generator inside and the battery here on the exterior. I want to use Velcro to do that. So finish the final details, and like that, the coil gun is ready. It looks a lot better than the previous version, but the 3D design could still be improved. For example, I forgot to add a hole for the projectile input, and the battery case could be a lot bigger. So comment below what I should do next to improve it. So guys, this was the update for my new coil gun, with 10 stages all together. 
you have the previous version below as well and all the needed files to complete such a project, the schematic, the Gerber files for the PCB, also the part list and the full tutorial on my website. Please be careful and don't play around with high voltage or fast shooting projectiles. This project should be for learning purposes. I hope that you like my project and if so give me a like or comment below. You can also check my Patreon page for more support or maybe my social media such as Instagram or Facebook. Thanks again and see you later guys. So guys here I am in my workshop, another video that ended, I hope that you like it and the most important part I hope that you have learned something new. Anyway I just wanted to give a thank you to all my patrons, to you guys, to the viewers who are supporting me, liking my content, uh, sharing it, commenting below, uh, just check my website, check my shop, check my t-shirts, all this kind of stuff will support my channel so thank you very much once again.